Hello, I am off to London. So I thought I'd bring you with me. I'm gonna go and try and sniff a few perfumes. In particular, I want to try one called, I think it's called Blanche Bette from Liquid Imaginaire. And that is a gourmand floral. So it sounds really good. I can't remember the notes, it sounds so good. And then I also want to retry one from Stefan Humbert Lucas, which is Lady White Snake. I tried it on paper briefly last time I was in London, really liked it. Had a bit of a Killian Love kind of feel to it, but I have a feeling that brand tends to go a touch animalic, a little bit funky, a little bit unusual. So I'm wondering what that would be like on skin and how, yeah, how it would develop and whether it's something that I would really enjoy. So there are two on my hit list, at least. I'm also going to go to the National Gallery. I thought I would go and look at some paintings, be a little bit civilised, be a little bit cultured. And if I'm allowed, I'll try and take some footage in there. I'm not sure if you can, but you'll soon find out. Well, hello, I'm home. I've made it home. Itchy nose. Had to take my makeup off. Just felt, I don't know, felt icky, needed to take my makeup off. But I'm home, I've just had about half an hour watching Doctor Sleep on Netflix whilst my phone recharged because my phone does not retain its battery. But let's talk about what happened, what did I see, what did I smell today? So you'll see from the images, I did go to the National Gallery and saw some amazing pictures. I got absolutely lost wandering around the National Gallery and I saw some Van Gogh, I saw some Renoir and loads and loads and loads and I'm not an art buff by any means at all but some really gorgeous, gorgeous, amazing paintings. It's so exciting to see things that are world renowned, you know, you see them on the internet, you see uh, you see them uh, in print and um, you see these pictures everywhere and and I saw them in real life and that was really, really cool. I really enjoyed that. So totally recommend the National Gallery. It's free to go in and it's really, you could, you could spend hours there. I probably spent about an hour, hour and a half and I definitely didn't see it all, but I saw some fantastic stuff. Then off I went to Harvey Nicks and then I went to Harrods and I can't remember what I smelled where but I will tell you about some of the things that I smelled. I smelled La Perla, there's two from La Perla that I really liked, I've actually got them. So what I do, when I go perfume sniffing, if I'm organised, I'll take a book, <laughs> sometimes a notebook but this time an actual book because I was, I'm reading this at the moment so I read this on the train, it's Becoming Bulletproof from Evie Pomporus. I then put the smelly cards inside the book. So let's try and find, here we go. La Perla Villa Sorrento. This is a citrusy one. And this one, when I first sprayed it, it smelled like bitter lemonade, but then a little bit sweeter at the same time. So it's kind of like lemony, vibrant, zesty. It's mellowed out to a lemon musk that's mostly what I get, kind of like a lemony musk. It's very, very pretty. It reminds me a little bit of Brooklyn from Gallivan, but maybe not as sweet. So that is Villa Sorrento from La Perla. And then the other La Perla that I liked, and this is one that was on my hit list of things I wanted to try, is My Day. My Day. And this is one of those creamy iris skin scent type uh, fragrances. It's very nice, but I have smelt quite a few things like this before now. A little bit like Tent de Neige from uh, Villa Renzi. It's in that ballpark. Maybe this is slightly creamier, slightly warmer. It's like when you wear a really nice skin lotion and you just, just the way your skin would smell with that lovely lotion on top. That kind of scent really, but it's very nice. I do like it. The bottle's really unusual. I don't know if I like them or not, actually. Can't make my mind up. I stopped at the memo, uh, memo bit. This was Harvey Nick's memo. Martha. This now smells like a musky orange blossom, white floral type thing with a little bit of sweetness. Nice, I quite like this one. I only put, I only saved the ones I liked, except one that I really didn't like, but 
they sprayed it on a card and I kept it and I'm gonna tell you about it. Next one from Memo is Siwa. This one was listed as a vanilla and cereal fragrance. It's quite light. To me, it smells a little bit citrusy. Now, when I first sprayed it, I, I think it did smell a bit different. It's not really vanilla, actually. It smells more like um, a sweetened sort of irisy type scent with some citrus, a little creamy element to it. It's quite nice. I think it needs to be on skin. I don't think paper's going to do this any justice. But that's Siwa. Here we go. Right, what we've got here. Granada. This one had a lot of florals in it. When I first smelt it, it smelt a lot like the tuberose. The tuberose was quite strong, but there were definitely quite a few other white florals. And now it smells like a tuberose, orange blossom, maybe jasmine, a little tiny bit of like a, a little bit of a musk. A little bit clean quite nice I did definitely like that uh, I don't think it's, it's exciting me but it's very nice and then we've got one called Corfu this smells more limey it smells like a limey musk a little kind of it's got a little tart fruitiness to it this is a little bit more interesting I think uh, this is the one with rhubarb I think you can smell rhubarb. You can actually smell the rhubarb. But it still smells limey at the same time. So that's quite nice. I didn't try the leathers from Memo because I'm not into leather. Let's now take you to the one that I don't like. And that is from Byredo. It's a new one. It's called Antique Vanilla. This is the aroma chemicals that I really don't like whatever they might be, dry, scratchy, annoying. Yes, I can smell some other good stuff like, you know, vanilla -y sort of amber, but it's overpowered by something like Ambroxin or Amber Max, something like that, it's just taken over. And I, I hate that, that's so annoying. So that's antique vanilla from Byredo. Uh, it's just a, a, a very chemical to my nose. I do not like that at all, unfortunately. Well, I say unfortunately, it doesn't really matter, does it? Now let's find what else we've got. I did smell a couple of Guerlain's. It's the Mugwe. So every year Guerlain will come out with a new bottle for their perfume called Mugwe. So Mugwe is a li Lily of the Valley and Lily of the Valley is kind of like a green, fresh white floral and when I first smelt it when it was first sprayed it literally smelt like a jar of lilies you know like a vase full of lilies now it's calmed down a little bit it's almost like slightly grassy and musky but still definitely green and lily like it's nothing groundbreaking or amazing if you like lily you you'll like it but I think people buy this for the bottle because it's generally, I think it's collectors that like to buy this. I wouldn't buy this. I'm not a big fan of Lily of the Valley, but it smells good. It's just not my thing. And then I also tried their uh, Cherry Blossom. So Cherry Blossom is one that is also in a special limited edition bottle, I think. It's kind of expensive, like really mega expensive. A mega pint highly sought after by collectors again and this one when she first sprayed it was a really pretty pink clean uh, vibrant cherry blossom scent now it's very light has a little of that clean musk thing in the background and a little sharpness from the floral almost slightly lemony but basically just a light floral and that's not lasted very well on the paper at all so 
certainly not one I would be investing in. So that's Cherry Blossom from Guerlain. And that is the, the one that comes in the really expensive bottle, not the Aqua Allegoria of the same name, uh, which is discontinued. Let's see what else I've got in the book. Chopard Miel Darabi, so honey, uh, uh, Arabian honey, that should translate roughly to. Don't like that. The sales assistant sprayed it for me just randomly. They thought I might like it. Uh, it's a, it's another one that's quite musky. The musk is actually kind of like got a little bite to it and it's kind of sexy. And it's fruity. Couldn't tell you what fruits exactly I'm smelling. I'm not talking citrus fruits though. But <sighs> there's something in there I personally don't get on with. I'm not quite sure what it is. It might smell a little apricotty, like so it could be sort of like os osmanthus or something like that just not my thing it's, it's musky I think I do think it's quite sexy woody it smells kind of like um dry clean woods as well but no it's not my thing uh, Iris Malaika from Chopard this one is nice but it, it's pretty light smells like delicate paper. It smells like delicate paper that's been powdered with a very delicate powder. It is really nice. I would like to put that on skin because I don't think paper's doing it any justice. Again, it smells musky in a clean, definitely a clean musky way. But it's more like, yeah, it's more like smelling paper and powder. It's very innocent. Nothing jarring, nothing really standing out. There might be a hint of a white floral there, but it's not. It's nothing exotic, sharp, heady, screechy at all. There could be a whisper of something like a jasmine in the background. I really like that. If uh, if it was, uh, if I could try it on skin, and if it was to have a bit of a life on the skin. On the paper, it's not really got much life in it. It's not very strong, but I like it. I wanna try that on skin. Iris Malaika from Chopard. So, yep, that's good. Another one from Chopard, Vanille de Madagascar. And this is really interesting because I remember when I tried this and I was expecting a sweet perfume and it was not sweet at all, no sweetness whatsoever. A guy explained that it's a natural vanilla that they use and that's why it's not so sweet. But really and truly, I don't know that I would even know that there, that there was vanilla in this. It smells more like that creamy body lotion iris type scent again so I like it yeah it's, it's, a, it's another one that smells papery delicate light clean definitely would like to try it on skin now on first spray on the paper I didn't particularly like it it was a bit savory has improved so yeah I'm interested to I'd like to get my hands on some samples of these. Sort of mission impossible, I think. I would know no idea how I would do that, which is annoying. Right, have we run out of, I think we've run out, <laughs> just checking. Yep, I think that's everything that I got on paper. Now, on to skin. So, my plan was to try and smell one from Liquid Imaginaire. However, Jovoy were not open today. They don't open Sundays, I didn't know that. So I didn't go to Jovoy and I didn't try uh, Blanche Bet, I think it's called. However, I did manage to try the one from Stefan Humbert Lucas, which is called Lady White Snake. However, they didn't have any stock, but they did have a tester. I had to ask her to find it and she did find a tester for me and I sprayed it on here and when I first sprayed it, I thought it was quite nice. 
definitely has that orange blossom, you know, that makes you think of Killian, Love and Oriana, but it totally, it totally does not go really in that direction. It is a much more complex and less appealing fragrance. Now that I'm smelling it hours into the wear, it does feel like there's a slightly annoying aroma chemical in there, just a little bit. But it also, to me, it smells leathery, a little bit leathery, not really overly intense leather, but I definitely smell a leather that's giving it this animalic touch, that's making it feel sexy and edgy. It's totally edgy this fragrance and I smell her like dry woods and incense and the white floral the orange blossom but the orange blossoms calmed right down now it was stronger it smells like there could be an animal musk in here so it's not that clean musk it smells, a, but I wouldn't specifically say I smelled something like civet or castorium or anything like that. It just smells like there's an, an animalic feel, like almost like you are smelling an animal, you know? So it's a little jarring. I think to some palettes, it would just be a little step too far. To, for me, I don't love it. It's a touch challenging for me. And I'm really glad I tried it on skin because that's helped me to rule it out. However, I do think it's really interesting and something that you should check out if you like your fragrances to be a little, um, a little challenging without going crazy, crazy challenging, if you know what I mean. Now on the other hand, quite literally here, I have one from the same brand, Stefan Humbert Lucas, and this one's called A Wish Come True. And I like this one a lot better. Although I feel like I can smell the same sort of leathery note in there and I don't generally love leather. It also smells smells to me like iris and violet and some clean mask. Maybe a touch of a white floral but very soft like a whisper of incense. Really really interesting, really nice with an edge, but not quite the same amount of edge as the Lady White Snake. So I actually really like that. I'd love to get a sample of a wish come true because that's really good. So I will try to do that. I think I might know someone that could help me out with that. So um, watch this space because I'd like to properly review it. So I think it's really interesting. Now then I, on my skin I've got a Jimmy Choo fragrance and it's the iris one I've got up here and I will talk to you about them in general the line so the Jimmy Choo they appear to be a Privé type line in different bottles and I smelt them all just from the lid and then I put the iris one on my skin I can't remember the name of the iris one but the iris one is really nice and it's really quite mass appealing. It smells a little bit like Tiffany Intense, Tiffany for her Intense, which is the pear and iris perfume, which I quite like actually. Uh, it's more generic, it's more crowd pleasing, it's sweeter, There's, it feels like there's vanilla. It smells to me like pear, vanilla and iris. It smells fruity like fruity boiled sweets as well, maybe like pear drops, but maybe some other fruity boiled sweets and vanilla, the vanilla is not a complex natural smelling vanilla, it's probably vanillin could be wrong, but my guess would be it's vanillin, a very kind of like flat, but very nice sweet vanilla and the iris to give it a gentle soft powdery ness. Really nice. The other ones in the line, I sniffed them from the lid, as I said, there's a tuberose. The tuberose reminded me of Madonna's True For Dare, so it's a full on sort of tuberose in your face, tits and arse as I like to call it. Basically everything I smelled reminded me of something I've smelt before. 
So they are not particularly unique and they definitely have a crowd pleasing feel. There was a vanilla, that's right. And the vanilla was uh, quite full on vanillic, uh, kind of like you've definitely smelt the, this type of vanilla scent before. I think of Zerzhov's Dharma Bianca or even, um, or what's it called? The cheap vanilla. Um, from the botanical Couvent de Minimis, the vanilla one, everyone used to say smelt like spirit juice double vanilla. But it's like that, it's like a full on vanilla and it, you've smelt it before. And then there was a couple of others, I've forgotten how they smell, but everything I lifted to my nose smelt like something I've smelt before and definitely done in a very mass appealing way. So uh, nothing that exciting there. And finally, on the back of my hand, I have Chanel uh, 31 Rue Cambon because I'm still trying to decide what's my favorite Chanel exclusive. I do really like Missia, that's probably my favorite, but I've been toying with 1957 and, and now today I'm trying the 31 Rue Cambon, which I tried years ago because they're iris perfumes. But there is this sharpness to both 1957 and Rue Cambon. There's almost like hairspray esque that I'm not sure I like it kind of jars me a little bit so yeah I think that's it I did stop for a drink uh, I stopped because it was raining and I was on in between places and I just stepped inside a pub just to get out the rain and of course I had to have a pint and so I stopped for a drink and uh, another place, I won't show you any footage, but I stopped for a shawarma wrap. So it was like a kebab, little kebabby type place and it was a chicken shawarma, uh, all, all, all wrapped up with salad and, and stuff and it was really, really good actually. So I enjoyed that. That's it then. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another video. Bye.